Hello again, everyone. Stu Hardenstein with the Central Region Umpire Advisory Committee, and we are proud to go ahead and issue yet another follow-up video to our 2021 Focal Point series that we started with back out in March. We hope that everyone is having a great season, that you're enjoying the time back on the diamond, that you're having fun here, uh, and then obviously that we also help then, hope then that you are uh, finding a lot of these videos and what we're producing here to be useful for you and helping you to improve uh, so far here this season. Now, this is our third video in our series, our follow-up up series to the focal points that we released back in March to help everyone think about some things to use to improve upon as we all hit the diamonds back this season. Now this in our third video we'll take a look then at wedge theory and our wedge progression. Many of us as we talked about in our introduction back in March are different phases in our wedge progression. So we'll take a look at our wedge progression today and not only then will we take a look at that wedge progression and revisit some of those theories of wedge positioning, uh, we'll also take a look at how exactly to apply wedge positioning for steel plays at the plate, which is a frequently asked question that we got. So kind of two things here for us in this follow-up video. Number one, the wedge progression, and then secondly, applying what we know about the wedge for steel plays at the plate. We'll take a look at some fundamental concepts in umpiring. Staying chest to ball would be one of them, and obviously proper use of eyes. So that'll be on tap here for us as well. But let's go ahead and take a look at some examples here. Uh, not only conceptually some things to think about, but then also some video examples here of how exactly to use our wedge progression to make improvements there, and then ultimately to also go ahead and apply it then for steel plays at the plate. Now, a couple concepts here that we want to go ahead and at least address with before we even start to talk about our wedge progression. And I think one of those things is to make sure that we are moving efficiently from behind the plate. So the first major concept for us to understand is that we have to be efficient with our movements from behind the plate. Now, if you watch three up, three down, there is a segment on efficient movements from behind the plate. And we talked about four different reasons why it's okay for an umpire to move from behind the plate. Now, if you remember in our wedge progression and in wedge theory, it all starts with us starting at point of plate. So we wanna hold on to point of plate as much as possible. And that's one of the major themes that we'll go ahead and emphasize here today. But moving away from point of plate is permissible in these four instances. Number one, when we're responsible for a fly ball to the outfield. Secondly, when we're trailing the batter runner up to first base with no runners in scoring position. Third, when we're rotating up to third base with R1 only or R1 and R3 in those situations. And then lastly, moving to go ahead and line up a tag up attempt. So that would allow us then to be in situations where we move away from point of plate. And again, we took a look at those in our efficient movement series uh, in three up, three down. Now, what's important to make sure that we understand here is that holding on to point of plate is going to be a very important theme to allow us to use wedge theory for tag plays at the plate. So if we're not doing any of those four things in the previous slide, we need to make sure that we're holding on to point of plate. So if we do not have a responsibility, one of those four, chasing a fly ball, trailing the batter runner, uh, lining up a tag attempt, for example, uh, if we're not doing any of those four things that we mentioned on the previous slide, we should see the umpire remain at point of plate. Now, if we do have responsibilities, as we mentioned in the previous slide, that take us away from point of plate, we're going to handle those responsibilities and then return aggressively with urgency back to point of plate. Again, why is returning and holding on to point of plate so important? Because again, that's what sets us up to be able to find the wedge for tag plays at home plate. So if you take a look at the bottom of the screen, point of plate is where we want to be. That's the good spot. If we find ourselves drifting or wandering or not returning back to point of plate in time, that's a bad thing. So we want to make sure here in our fundamental route here so far today uh, that we are going to hold on to point of plate. And if we are handling responsibilities elsewhere, that we return to point of plate with aggression and with urgency in order to set us up then to be able to use the wedge. Now, if we take a look here at wedge positioning, we've kind of been on this path for the last few years here in the central region. Uh, one of the first fundamental steps in applying wedge theory for tag plays at the plate is to start closer. And the guiding theme here is that we want to be five to seven feet from the fielder receiving the throw with the runner sliding at us. So again, five to seven feet from the uh, fielder receiving the throw. In this clip, it happens to be the catcher. And take a look at the positioning of our plate umpire. He is definitely within that five to seven foot range from the fielder receiving the throw at point of plate to then go ahead and get the runner sliding at us. So again, holding on to point of plate is exactly where we want to be, as we mentioned earlier on here so far in the video. Uh, but again, we want to start closer. That's the first adjustment that we want to make from point of plate, start five to seven feet from the fielder receiving the throw so that we can get the runner sliding at us. And again, starting at point of plate and starting closer 
is the first step in being able to apply wedge theory for tag plays at the plate. Now, some people wonder if five to seven feet is too close. Now, again, a lot of people start to say, well, if I'm too close, the play is going to blow up on me. Well, if you've ever heard someone tell you that the play blew up on you, basically what they should be telling you is that you did not use your eyes properly. Plays blow up on us when we don't get our eyes ahead of the throw. That's when plays blow up on us. They do not blow up on us when we're too close. So again here, we still want to use that five to seven foot range from the fielder receiving the throw to set us up for the tag plays. But again, we can't think that being too close will inevitably lead to more plays blowing up on us. That's not the case. Proper use of eyes is what helps us avoid plays blowing up on us. Now again, some people wonder whether or not five to seven feet is too close. And the reason why we want to use the closer the better as a mantra here is because as you see, the closer we are to the play, the more viewing angle that we actually get into the tag attempt. So compare figure one with figure two. As you take a look at these figures, the viewing angle by starting closer in figure one is greater than the viewing angle that we actually see the umpire get if he were to take a position or she were to take a position further back as we see in figure two. So one of the reasons that we want to get closer to the play is to afford us a greater angle of view into the tag attempt as we start to see the, thing, the play evolve and develop. So step number one in applying the wedge is to start closer, five to seven feet from the fielder receiving the throw so that we have a greater view, a greater um, a look in a one-step adjustment as the play goes ahead and develops. A couple still shots to show you two very similar plays. Both are swipe tags on the runner. Uh, you see here in figure three, our umpire is positioned in the wedge and he actually has an, a greater viewing angle into the play versus that in figure four, where the umpire is actually on the grass of the dirt circle. So he is positioned further back, not as close in that five to seven foot target distance from the fielder receiving the throw. And as a result, in figure four, we see a more narrow or a limited viewing angle into the tag attempt. So we start closer to number one, allow us to gain more angle into the play, and that then allows us to see an increase not only in our viewing angle, but then obviously in getting the call right. So step number one, start five to seven feet from the fielder receiving the throw. And then obviously we want to try and get the runner sliding at us uh, from that initial starting position. Step number two in our wedge progression is to follow the fielder. Now, why do we follow the fielder? Well, the fielder is going to take us to the ball and then from there, take us to the tag attempt. If we use the base as a line of demarcation, we may be too far away from the tag attempt and we may be more inclined to get straight lined or blocked on the viewing angle as we saw demonstrated in the previous slides. So we want to follow the fielder because the fielder takes us to the ball and then the ball takes us to the tag attempt. The fielder in the ball is what we want to position with. So step number one, uh, start closer. Step number two, follow the fielder. Take a look here. This umpire is going to react not to the initial movement of the catcher, but rather than with the catcher's reaction to receive the throw. So as the catcher moves to his left to field this uh, thrown ball, the umpire then takes those steps as well. He wants to make sure that he stays on the inside hip or the base side hip of the fielder receiving the throw. And that would allow him then to, as we'll see in step number three, stay in the window. So step number two is to follow the fielder. So if that fielder moves left, right, forward, or backward to receive the throw, we want to mimic that same movement because again, that's going to take us to the tag attempt. Stay on the plate side or the base side hip of that fielder. And then as I mentioned here, step number three will be to stay in the window. Now, staying in the window will actually require us to continue to move. Now, that is probably something that's a little bit different than what we've previously been taught. So staying in the window is going to require us to continue to move as the play evolves rather than pointing uh, or picking first or third baseline extended, planning there for the duration of the play. So step number three in the evolution of the play is to allow us to continue to move. Yes, with the fielder, as we saw in the previous clip, uh, but here again to find that window. And that window then is between the fielder who is receiving the throw. So we're going to say on his or her plate side hip and then the runner coming in. That's where we want our head and eyes to be positioned. Now, if we take a look at the job of our umpires, this um, as this throw comes in from right field, we'll see here as he comes into the screen, he is moving from point of plate. So again, very controlled steps and controlled movement. That's why we call them quiet steps. And as we see, he is moving with the fielder who has moved slightly up the right, the right field line or the first base line to receive this throw. And then this umpire continues to step into the window to basically stay between the fielder's plate side hip 
and the runner. That's what we mean by staying in the window, staying in between the plate side hip and the window uh, of the runner. And then that's going to put him into a great viewing angle down and through the tag attempt. Take a look at the replay. You'll see his quiet steps. He's moving from point of plate, staying on the plate side hip of the fielder, receiving the throw, staying close with that five to seven foot target distance and putting it all together. And again, as we see this play continue to evolve, our umpire's head and eyes are right in that window, in that space between the plate side hip of the fielder receiving the throw and then the runner. So step number three here then is to stay in the window using those quiet steps after we've moved with the fielder and then obviously started at point of plate five to seven feet from the fielder receiving the throw. Now one bonus here, we obviously can't have a video this year without talking about proper use of eyes. Remember here in this case with our proper use of eyes, this umpire's done a great job yet again of finding the wedge. But as this fielder goes up to show the baseball to the, to the umpire, we should see the umpire's head and eyes go straight to the glove before, pointing, before punching this runner out or making his or her call. Uh, so again, proper use of eyes, that's where we get our timing. And again, we want to confirm firm and secure possession to allow us then uh, to have proper timing and to make sure that we see all factors of the play before signaling and coming to our conclusion. Don't let the excitement of the play and your proximity to it through using the wedge allow you to abandon the fundamentals. So again, proper use of eyes, confirm firm and secure possession, and then make your call. We should see this umpire's eyes go straight to the glove here of the fielder uh, as he goes to show the umpire the, the ball here before making our out call. But a great job here nonetheless in these two clips by this individual umpire of applying those three fundamentals of wedge positioning. Starting closer from point of plate at five to seven feet from the fielder receiving the throw. Secondly, adjusting with the fielder. And then thirdly, staying in the window between the plate side hip of the fielder receiving the throw and the runner coming into the base. Now, all that's great for plays coming into us, and we can kind of execute those things. So wedge theory for plays coming into us from the field, pretty uh, straightforward in how exactly we're going to follow those three steps, as I mentioned. However, with steel plays at the plate, factors of the play are not as uh, clear cut as we would see with plays coming at us from the field. So as we see here with steel plays at the plate, if you take a look at the list of the three things that I have here for us, wedge, the wedge positioning is the last priority. I'll make sure I emphasize that again. Wedge positioning is the last priority here for handling steel plays at the plate. Why is that? Well, number one, we've got to make sure here that the fielder, uh, in this case, it's probably the catcher and the pitcher can work together to attempt to make a play on the runner coming in. So freedom of movement for the fielders involved and for the runner, obviously, is our number one priority, whereas the wedge is our secondary pri uh, priority. So we would rather see umpires afford freedom of movement for the catcher to go get the ball and to complete the throw to the plate rather than prioritizing the wedge. The wedge is essentially graving. It's the icy on the cake cake, so to speak. Uh, the wedges, as I said here, gravy. It is the icing on the cake. And the goal here with runners sliding at us, that is kind of the secondary priority, whereas our first priority is to afford freedom of movement for the fielder. Let's take a look at a couple clips here of this in action. First one's a ball to the screen. Okay, This umpire does a great job of, number one, opening the gate. You see he pivots on his right foot, opens up. Guess what? Another great fundamental here is chest to ball. And again, that allows us to make sure that we have a viewing, or I'm sorry, freedom of movement of the fielder. So pivoting to open up, opening up the gate here affords freedom of movement for the catcher to go get the ball. And then remaining chest to ball allows for this catcher to have a clear throwing lane to the pitcher who is going to go ahead and cover the base. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, fundamentals that our umpire gives us uh, aside then from opening the gate here, as I mentioned. Okay, so he opens the gate, freedom of movement for the catcher to go to the screen and to complete the throw to the pitcher. Now, what we see him do here a great job of is he does not back away. Remember earlier on in this video, I talked about trying to hold on to proximity to point of plate as much as we can, not only in our movements from behind the plate, but that can also then be applied here to steel plays potentially that may be coming to us at the plate. So we still want to stay close about five to seven feet from the fielder who's going to be receiving the throw. So that requires in us to open the gate as this umpire does, go chest the ball without backing away. We do not want to see the umpire back away because if we back away, that means that we're just going to have to regain those steps back as the play goes ahead and evolves. And we all know that these steel plays develop really, really quickly. So this umpire does a great job of not backing away and staying close. And then he's able to anticipate the wedge between the fielder receiving the throw, in this case it's the, pit, the pitcher, and then ultimately the runner coming in. 
And as you see, he does a good job to get his head as best as he can in between that viewing angle, between the runner receiving and coming in and the fielder receiving the throw. Great job here with eyes. If you take a look at where his eyes are in this freeze frame, they are on the glove to confirm firm and secure possession. He confirms firm and secure possession through the tag attempt and then goes ahead and punches the runner out. So a great job here by these fundamentals. Good look here at the uh, aerial shot behind the plate. Again, good job by this plate umpire to number one, open the gate, remain chest to ball, and to not back away. That way he can gain momentum and steps and distance, gain viewing angle into this play. And as we see, when this tag attempt happens, when you look at it, this umpire has done a great job of staying close, of not backing away, and then anticipating the wedge or finding the window, staying in the window between the plate side hip of the fielder receiving the throw, in this case it's the pitcher, and the runner coming in. So this umpire's done a great job here of being able to apply, number one, the priority of freedom of movement to the catcher to go get the ball and to provide a throwing lane to the plate, and then staying close to go ahead and anticipate the wedge uh, as the steel plate continues to evolve. Good job again of use of eyes, confirming firm and secure possession, and then going ahead and making the out call. Pretty close play here at the plate. Okay, a really nice job here by this plate umpire uh, to execute all those fundamentals that we've talked about. One more look at it. Again, just to highlight, he has not backed away. If we back away uh, or take any type of negative steps further away from this play, we're only going to have to regain those. And remember, the further we are back, the less viewing angle that we have into the play. So a good job here by this plate umpire to, number one, prioritize freedom of movement for the fielders involved. And then secondly, the wedge is gravy. He was able to go ahead and anticipate that by staying close and getting the runner sliding at him. Another look at a similar play, okay, this one's a throw in from right field, it's actually going to scoop past the catcher, uh, same umpire ironically in this clip, uh, but here what he does is he opens up, so you'll see he'll pivot and open up just as we talked about, but he starts to back away, everybody take a look here at uh, what he's doing, he starts to back away, and as he starts to back away and drift further away from the plate, he's going to have to regain those steps back into view this tag attempt. Okay, so again, he backed away a little further to his right and then had to come back into the play here, as we mentioned, uh, to go ahead and get the best look he possibly could. Now, remember, our priority in this case with the ball at the backstop is to afford freedom of movement of the fielders involved. So the umpire has moved and provided that freedom of movement for the catcher to go get the pass ball and then obviously make the throw to the pitcher who is now covering the plate. But again, what this umpire has done, you can kind of see it as I rewind it, he's taken some negative steps further away from the plate. Okay, So as we see here, we can kind of see where he starts. As he starts to go ahead and take those steps away, now all of a sudden he's going to have to regain those steps as the play continues to evolve. And as we see this play continuing to evolve, because he's moved further back, now he has to regain those, and he barely is able to get over the shoulder of the pitcher at the time this tag attempt is applied to be able to see just barely over this umpire, this uh, fielder's shoulder. Maybe if he doesn't back away more than one step or two steps, uh, he then would probably have a better viewing angle at this one. Nonetheless, a really good job by this umpire to work hard to, number one, afford freedom of movement for the catcher and the pitcher, uh, and then ultimately work to get the best look possible on this tag attempt. Now, again, this uh, the, the fielder goes to show the umpire the ball. We'll see this one here in the freeze frame, so we can kind of highlight proper use of eyes here yet again. Uh, we should see this umpire's eyes right now go to the glove to confirm firm and secure possession and then punch the runner out here. Okay. Now, in both of these clips that we've seen, the ball has gone to the same side of the screen. It's kind of gone back to that open side, which has allowed us to more easily get the runner sliding at us. So what if the position of the baseball goes the opposite way, where we can't necessarily get the runner sliding at us as our ideal initial starting position, as we saw in the previous two slides? Well, the fundamentals are same. Number one, afford freedom of movement. And secondly, do not back up. Again, our two priorities. Number one, afford freedom of movement of the fielder. That's the first priority. And then secondly, try and stay as close as you po possibly can to get the runner sliding at us. Now, in this case, this ball goes back to the screen. And as it goes off to the other side here, this umpire does a great job of pivoting and remaining chest to ball. And then he fixates his eyes ahead of the play so that it doesn't blow up on him, so to speak. We see his eyes get ahead of the play there. Again, he's afforded freedom of movement of the catcher to go get the ball and for the catcher then to obviously go ahead and throw the ball to the pitcher. And then as you see this umpire, as he just did, I'll rewind it just here in a second. 
as he's affording freedom of movement, he stays close. He doesn't back away. We want to try and stay at point of plate. We want to try and stay at point of plate as much as we can. Hold on to point of plate. And then as the throw clears him, you can see him here swing back in through there and then try to work to get the runner sliding at him. Again, freedom of movement for the fielder to go get the ball and make the throw is the priority. We hold on to point of plate as priority number two as best as we can. And then if we can get the runner sliding at us to get our head and eyes in between the runner and the fielder as we kind of try and see done here, that then is the icing on the cake. That's our third priority here with steel plays. The wedge then is, is, is gravy, so to speak, is the icing on the cake here with our steel plays. A good look at the aerial shot behind here. Again, great job by this plate umpire to number one, open the gate. You see he pivots on his left foot, opens up with the right, and he does not back away from this position. And that's what allows him then to number one, remain chest to ball. Secondly, proper use of eyes here to know where the ball is and proper use of eyes to get his eyes ahead of the play so it doesn't blow up on him. As this throw clears him, you'll see that he is able to move in one, two steps to go ahead and get the runner sliding at us, find the wedge as best as he can. So again, a great look here at this clip at those three primary priorities or fundamentals on these steel plays. Number one, open the gate to afford freedom of movement. Secondly here, stay chest to ball. Third, get your eyes ahead of the play here. And then lastly, if you can get the runner sliding at you to stay in the window between the fielder and the runner, that is gravy. That's the icing on the cake. And again, those uh, happen to be our progression here uh, for not only applying the wedge for tag plays at the plate, but then also, also then for steel plays here and where exactly we can use the wedge for steel plays at the plate. Now, again, important to note here that the wedge is gravy. It's kind of the icing on the cake, that last nice thing that's that we can put. Again, afford freedom of movement, stay chest to ball and get your eyes ahead, and then get the runner sliding at you is the priorities then for steel plays at the plate. Again, we hope that these videos that we've been putting out here this season have been useful for you, either through three up, three down, or our follow-ups. We appreciate everybody's attention and efforts to go ahead and continue to improve on the diamonds here uh, throughout 2021. Thanks for your participation, your attention. Continue to use those eyes properly and stay chest to ball. We'll see you next time on our next follow-up video here.